today we are going to begin our uh, third module, where we would be talking about uh, the range of uh, reactions that human beings are usually capable of uh, displaying. Uh, what our uh, basic attempt is to primarily understand that, even if there is uh, a only one type of a situation that demands you to respond, uh, there could be a possibility of coming forward with n number of responses. From psychological viewpoint, we are not interested in terms of computing what the, this n could be. What we are interested in uh, is that, uh, what are the basic nature of uh, these set of human reactions. So, what we will do is, that we will see uh, a particular situation, we will see what could be the possible responses and then we will try to you know break them into chunks. These chunks uh, will be defined broadly as certain type of uh, behavioral manifestations and then we will try to say uh, that uh, is this range of reaction uh, normal or it falls on the gray zone, the subnormal end or is it that it uh, now goes towards the abnormal end. Okay. We will uh, here we will for each of the steps, for each type of uh, behavior uh, that is possible, uh, we will try to see whether it has a social acceptance, whether it has a legal acceptance and of course, whether it has a psychological acceptance or not. Okay. So, this is uh, know the way we will be uh, moving across. Just one day uh, short type of discussion on this, uh, to understand the range of human reactions. Till now, what we have been doing, after we have defined uh, know that there could be a possible way of interpreting normality and hence with respect to normality, subnormality and abnormality can also be defined. Okay. We took the example of marriage. Okay. Uh, the basic reason of taking marriage as an example was uh, that uh, this is a uh, no fact of the society uh, that uh, no has uh, no psychological social legal all types of uh, no uh, burdens over it no? it has certain influences of uh, no all these three uh, major uh, segments of the society today we are going to move a little ahead and uh, Instead of taking marriage as an example, you remember the national geography example that I uh, quoted here in the class that uh, know, uh, students of your age, once they have completed their fourth year, they join the IT industry and then they were interviewed, you remember that example. Okay. Uh, so, having a house of uh, one's own was considered to be ex extremely important. The second uh, extremely important uh, know, requirement was that uh, you should get married. Okay. And as you know, uh, know in our uh, uh, social uh, fabric, one important consideration after marriage is that uh, you should also have a child. With respect to the possible uh, know reactions in terms of uh, know this type of a situation, where uh, you are somebody, we take an example of uh, uh, women because primarily procreation in this society has been uh, know, affiliated to uh, womanhood. And if a woman is not able to bear a child, we consider her to be responsible instead of any other factor by and large. So, we will take that as an example, uh, that you are a woman who is uh, know, little advanced in age, has got married for a couple of years okay, and has not been able to produce an offspring. Okay. There is a social you know, uh, demand for it, the family also says know that this is a time, high time that you should have a baby. Okay. What could be the possible reactions? The way we would look at it is, we will uh, know first begin with the extreme possibility, you know, the direct overt attack. So, you have a problem at hand that uh, you are a woman who has not been able to conceive. So, what could be the direct overt attack for this very problem. Once we discuss that, we will come to the second set of uh, reactions that is substitute reactions. Now, I know that I am not able to produce an offspring, what do I do now? Okay. Substitute reaction, then we come to borderline defense reactions. Okay. 
Now you see remember there is a color code on the top, the first two this simply means that these are perfectly normal human reactions. Then the pink one is uh, you know the borderline case, so borderline defense reaction. So you adopt one or the other type of defense mechanisms, okay, uh, which basically you know helps you remain on the borderline of normality and abnormality. Okay. Then the fourth set of reactions that are called as socially unacceptable overt reactions. You perform certain type of actions okay, which does not have social approval and hence whether you are normal or not because besides the clinical interpretation of normality, there is also a social way of looking at the behavior. Okay. So, we will look at those behavior and see whether it is legally acceptable, whether it is clinically acceptable, whether it is socially acceptable. Socially it is unacceptable that whole category of behavior is socially unacceptable, but we will try to see from the legal and the psychological acceptance point of view. And then we will come to you know the another rest uh, two sets of uh, behav uh, behavioral manifestations, the possibilities which has the red tag over it, psychosomatic and neurotic reactions. Okay, which are of course you know, uh, uh, psychotic disorders and neurotic disorders both are considered as one type of pathological disorder in psychology. And then the extreme form of response which is psychotic disorder which is uh, you know, uh, an acute set of problems which helps the clinicians cl uh, classify you to be a sufferer of one or the other psychotic disorder. So, this is the full range that we will cover. Uh, example will remain the same okay, that uh, say 35, 40 year old uh, woman who has been married for say last 8 or 10, uh, ten years, uh, she has not been able to produce an offspring. Okay. The possibility of reactions, the first set of direct overt attacks, you decide that you go for a thorough medical examination and diagnosis. Okay. Uh, usually this is what is uh, anticipated. No? Uh, that you have uh, no, you are uh, thinking of a possible uh, problem and therefore you realize that the person who uh, can very well uh, know diagnose you can let you know where the problem lies can also uh, uh, suggest you the alternatives is a physical practitioner and hence you visit the medical practitioner you undergo thorough examination you go for certain set of diagnosis this is uh, perfectly okay. It has psychological acceptance, it has social acceptance, it has legal acceptance. Now, once you have undergone a test and the doctor tells you that there is uh, no, no problem with you, then you ask your husband to undergo a test. Okay. And when you ask your husband to undergo a test, okay, legally it is perfectly okay, psychologically it is perfectly okay, socially you will find a variation. Okay. In uh, small, small uh, no, sections of the society, uh, it is considered to be an offense to manhood okay. and you will come across uh, know, especially when you read the uh, details of different types of uh, domestic violence. One of the prominent reason of uh, violence is also is that when uh, the wife demands the husband okay, uh, for something which challenges the you know, manhood of uh, that very individual. But still you know uh, by and large some of the men can also agree some and in certain societies you will find there are little uh, degree of uh, unacceptance for this, but by and large you will find that there is a great degree of acceptability. This is also a very direct overt attack that uh, I know that there are two people involved in the process. The first one has undergone diagnosis, has not been identified with any problem, person has not uh, been diagnosed with a problem. So, possibly the problem lies with the second person and that person undergoes a diagnosis. Okay. Then uh, after uh, having the thorough medical examination, <coughs> the medical practitioner tells you that you have might have to undergo certain surgical intervention or behavioral uh, no, uh, recommendations are given to you or some medical prescriptions are uh, suggested. Okay. Whether it is medical, whether it is surgical, whether it is behavioral, okay. all you have to do is to simply comply to the suggestions that has been given to you by the experts. You follow that and uh, you overcome the problem. Okay. Uh, this also has you no know, all three surgical, medical, behavioral uh, interventions, all three of them have 
uh, social, legal and psychological acceptance. All uh, these three set of behavior, okay, uh, they constitute the segment what is being defined here as direct overt attack. Okay. Direct overt attack usually is that type of behavior where you take the situation at hand, you decide to confront, okay. you try to confront the situation face to face. So, I know this is the problem, I bring the problem here, try to uh, know, handle it face to face and I resolve it. What if I do not go for a direct overt attack? I am told by the medical practitioner that fine, uh, know, uh, any of the medical, surgical or behavioral intervention would not work for you or the doctor says that we have tried and we have failed. So, there is no possibility of you have bearing a child and then you decide of another set of uh, responses. Okay. You may decide now that fine, let me adopt a child or let me adopt a couple of children. Okay. Now, the fact that I cannot have a child of my own gets substituted by the very fact that I adopt another child. The process of adoption has social, legal, psychological acceptance, there is no problem at any end. Okay. In fact, I must tell you that the uh, adoption rule has become a little stringent in our country uh, in the recent past. Okay. Uh, earlier it was not so, but I am told uh, by somebody who has adopted a baby couple of years back okay, that uh, the laws have become little stringent and uh, the parents who have adopted the child along with uh, you know, the original uh, caretaker with whom the child was and the child they all have to visit the court couple of times. And the court wants to uh, you know certain that there is no problem in terms of the adjustment with the child. Okay. The other possibility could be that you accept the fact that fine, uh, you know, I am not able to bear a child and this is the truth of my life. You have accepted, but then you uh, somehow develop this uh, tendency to go to professions which primarily deals with children. So, you become a pediatrician yourself, you become a doctor and you specialize in child care. So, you become a pediatrician, you become a nurse who is basically into care giving okay. and then you decide that you no know, care giving to children is far more important or you decide to become a teacher of uh, you know, small children where you are always you know, uh, surrounded by small, small kids. Okay. Becoming a doctor, becoming a nurse, becoming a teacher, all three of them are good professions okay. uh, and uh, going for any one of these profession is perfectly okay. It has social, legal, uh, psychological acceptance, no problem at all. The third possibility could be that I do not do the first two, I do not go for the first two options, rather I decide to have a pet or couple of pets in my house. So, dog, cat or dogs and cats okay. and usually uh, know such type of uh, uh, know exercise of adopting and uh, know taking care of the pets would be more when no uh, more reflective when you see that uh, these dogs and the cats are decorated. Okay. They are made to wear sweaters, jackets, trousers you must have seen those images. No? Uh, many people they you know uh, take pride in uh, taking care of pets like human kids, but then uh, taking care of a pet is acceptable no, in all formats. You go for you know little uh, more generalized and much more intense type of reactions like you decide uh, instead of uh, you know adopting one pet you decide to establish a veterinary hospital, a hospital which takes care of the those animals which otherwise will not get medical care anywhere. Okay. You join anti B section society in your uh, area, no? you say that no, these are atrocities to animals and we should certainly stop them. Okay. Or you uh, know start working with organizations which takes care of uh, cruelty against uh, know, uh, animals. So, it is primarily the desire Okay, psychologically speaking, it is primarily the desire for a child which gets substituted by another human baby 
in case you go for the first alternative of adopting a child or uh, you try to further diffuse it. So, you do not have a baby of your own, but you tend to be surrounded by babies uh, and hence you uh, know, choose for professions which ensures that you will be surrounded by human babies or a third set of uh, substitute where uh, the original desire of having your own offspring is substituted by adopting a animal. And this animal you know is basically again a substitute of the first example where you had the option of <coughs> adopting a human child. And again instead of you know, uh, becoming a nurse, a pediatrician or a teacher you go for uh, veterinary hospital, anti uh, baby section uh, you know, movement, uh, joining movements which has to do with cruelty against uh, children or cruelty against animal. All these are considered as substitute reactions the original desire has been substituted by some other format. But then all these substitute reactions have great degree of social acceptance. So, if you are a doctor, doctors are celebrated like anything in our uh, society. If you establish a hospital, uh, you know it uh, gives you name and fame for I do not know how many years after even after you die. Okay, people will remember you that you had done this thing for the society. So, all of this has social acceptance. All of this behavior also has legal acceptance. Okay. As I told you uh, that only for the first case uh, adopting a human child uh, in the recent past the law has become little stringent okay. and that is good for uh, the babies you know, who are being adopted because the courts want to ensure uh, that the child does not suffer any type of neglect after he or she has been adopted. Okay. Psychologically speaking uh, this is again perfectly okay. Although you are substituting the original desire by something else, but because it gels well with your uh, know, lifestyle, it does not hamper your psychological functions at any level in any form. Therefore, psychologically also this is perfectly ok. okay. It is only uh, uh, know from a psychological viewpoint that we consider it to be substitute reactions know, that these actions are actually intended to replace some original desire and therefore, this word has been added otherwise it is perfectly ok. Both these sets of direct overt attacks and socially acceptable substitute reactions are completely 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 normal uh, know, set of behavior. We now come to the third set of human reactions. Okay. The first set of behavior where you decided to confront the problem directly second set of uh, behavior where you decided to replace the original desire by uh, fulfilling it by some other form. We are now coming to the third set of reactions where you uh, know adopt one or the other mechanism, you remain childless, you do not you do not adopt a child, you are not going for a substitute reaction, but then uh, you show certain type of reactions in your behavior. The possible reactions could be one when you talk to others you justify you know how uh, you know pleasant it has been for you remaining childless. You could succeed in your life simply because you had uh, no, no child and uh, you did not invest your time or you did not waste your time taking care of a child. Okay. You could do much much greater things in life because you, uh, you were not supposed to invest on uh, the bringing up and education of your child. So, you just you basically what you do is that you start justifying okay, the blessings of being childless. Psychologically this is a defense mechanism and this defense mechanism is called rationalization. No? Something in your life uh, that you are trying to justify okay, as if what happened is uh, know, something that should have happened and it happened because I did not had something else others could not achieve my level because they were they had kids <coughs> and this is whole process of rationalization. Uh, see here you will find couple of uh, know, defense mechanisms written here. As I told you that uh, I think uh, in the last lecture or before that that uh, uh, defense mechanisms are usually those uh, know forms of human reactions which are used at a unconscious level. Okay. So, you perceive a threat to your ego 
and in order to defend it all you do is that you put a defense a shield in front of you that will safeguard you from the external world so, okay so i being childless okay can be under scrutiny by different members of the society hence i need to defend myself the first set of defense is rationalization so the moment i am uh, you know questioned about my childlessness i just uh, you know rationalize it justifies it okay and i give the reason what is uh, why is it uh, you know good to remain childless in life now socially people uh, know might accept your argument because it seems sound to them some of them some of them will say that oh you know she is just trying to justify it but otherwise your acceptance in the society is not at stake you remain uh, the way you are legally there is no harm remaining childless legally there is no harm rationalizing uh, you know uh, the fact that you are childless psychologically uh, you know that this is uh, one of the uh, defense reactions that is being used okay but uh, the very fact that defense mechanisms are primarily made to defend your ego hence usage of one of them uh, no to defend this situation is perfectly okay the only difference here is that now you are on the in the borderline zone the second problem could be that you start blaming your parents that you know uh, uh, i doctors told me that uh, everything is fine with me but perhaps i think you know my parents didn't take care of me properly i wasn't fed i wasn't given medical care i was deprived of certain nutrition uh, that uh, made me come to a point where i am not able to conceive now such type of things are considered as projection why because you try to project the blame for not having a child on somebody else okay so usually no human beings in most of the situations when you realize that you are really caught at a wrong foot many of you uh, many of us use this technique no so for example if you get a bad grade you are not responsible the instructor is responsible okay so that's projection uh, in uh, rationalization you try to fit with arguments that i had a fever that morning the last night i couldn't sleep properly and hence i couldn't perform well in the exam okay had the slides been given to me had the question been disclosed to me had this happened okay then i would have got good grades okay projection is you simply say this man he is known for giving bad grades the third possibility could be little different when you start recollecting your earlier uh, days experiences and you try to revert back to our, one of the most pleasant earlier phases of your life so you realize that say uh, when i was 18 20 21 perfectly there was no such uh, no need imposed on me okay and my life was as beautiful as uh, one can think of so you regress back to that phase of your life regression is a tendency of an individual to revert to one of the earlier phases of life which the individual considers to be most pleasant so say the women considers that as a 20 20th year of her life was very pleasant so she now starts you know behaving as if she was 20 you dress up like that you talk like that means the way you led your life at the, when you were 20 you start replicating many of those things okay now here you have uh, no legally fine there is no problem whether you you know uh, act little matured or you uh, tend to be little immature psychologically this is a defense mechanism therefore perfectly okay socially people know uh, uh, might sometime start talking about you so you could become a subject of gossip okay have you seen nowadays she is doing like this so you could become uh, you know uh, an object of uh, scrutiny for uh, certain people in the society uh, you could become a hot cake for you know some type of gossips okay people always search for certain options like that no 
the other possibility could be that you start you know in your imagination you think as if the child in your neighborhood is your baby or a child that you see on the screen the child that you have seen somewhere <coughs> you start visualizing okay that that child happens to be yours that is fantasy you know so you are fantasizing and in your fantasy you have children and that you derive satisfaction out of it okay uh, because it's you know an individual's prerogative to think the way one wants and because it doesn't involve any set of uh, overt action therefore if you fantasize that way there is no problem there this also has social legal and psychological acceptance okay <coughs> then we come to another set of uh, reactions where you develop aversion for children okay and this in psychology we call it reaction formation reaction formation is a defense mechanism where you show a behavior exactly opposite of what you inwardly feel okay little difficult to digest no that inwardly for example inwardly i have a deep sense of liking for you outwardly i express extreme of hatred for you what the world sees it the is the outer manifestation okay that this person uh, neglects me this person doesn't like me he hates me like anything but inwardly that person actually likes you to the maximum possible extent so if you have that type of a diametrically opposite reaction overtly compared to what you internally feel that is called reaction formation okay now reaction formation in this type of case could be uh, that inwardly you you know passionately want a child outwardly you show extreme rejection for a child so you have your apartment and in front of it you no know, you uh, put a notice there children not allowed okay okay please leave your children when you visit me okay so when you do things like that you show extreme degree of aversion for children and that is an indicator of reaction formation once again legally there is no point uh, having aversion for children psychologically also this is a defense mechanism socially uh people might start you know uh, thinking twice before visiting you because you show a version for their children okay so socially there could be a little uh, bit of incompatibility but otherwise uh, no by and large this format of reaction is also okay <coughs> because all of them are uh, defense mechanisms okay used in this type of a problem situation therefore they are called borderline defense reactions means in case you were not able to defend uh, your uh, need and hence your ego using these defense mechanisms okay uh, probably it could have led you to some other possibility you are successful leading a normal life because the defense mechanisms that you adopted uh, fetched you the desired results okay hence these are classified as borderline cases no that you are now in the gray zone then we come to the another set of reactions socially unacceptable overt reactions now these are you remember earlier we had discussed a direct overt attacks okay where you had uh, you know analyzed the problem and you decided to confront it head on okay you face the challenge you know and then you try to uh, you know get rid of it or find a suitable solution for it here also you have overt reactions but then it you know crosses the acceptance limit of the social protocol okay and hence they are also considered as compensatory reactions these reactions include indulging in uh, sexual promiscuity okay which has great degree of social uh, unacceptance legally also you no know, you can be challenged if you are uh, if you are a married uh, man or woman you can be dragged to the court of law okay and uh, with the recent uh, you know verdict of one of the high courts in india uh, okay even if you are not married but if you are in a living in relationship the court has given a different interpretation now okay so even if you can be held uh, responsible if you were not married but still you were in living in relationship uh, and has shown 
uh, your indulgence in social promiscuity. Okay, you can be dragged to the court of law. Okay. Uh, one way intellectual way of looking at it and uh, a more uh, what you call psychologically balanced way of looking at it could be uh, that you say that uh, it is an individual's act, two consenting adults are involved and hence I take a neutral view about it. Okay. Uh, if your action does not interfere with uh, know the other uh, know elements in the society and it does not break the stability there of units like family, units like a relationship, units like uh, society, uh, then uh, you say that fine this is the prerogative of the individual to decide one way or the other. The other possibility could be that you go for uh, know multiple marriages in your life. Uh, I do not know how many of you are aware of it, but uh, uh, if you look at the data uh, know of remarriages in India okay, or if you talk to uh, sociologists who are into you know uh, society, marriage and stuff like this, they do this type of a work, they will tell you that in our uh, society also there are large number of marriages, uh, where uh, the women is held responsible for uh, not uh, know giving a baby to the family and hence the man is supposed to marry some other woman. Okay. And uh, in uh, couple of situations, not many, but in couple of situations I have heard several times where uh, know the wife herself has asked her husband to go for the second marriage. Okay. So, so much is the know what you call social burden or social influence uh, that uh, you allow the know your husband to get remarried. Okay, or you allow the wife to get married, usually this does not happen, usually it is the husbands who would marry uh, multiple times. Okay. And this again is driven by the whole idea that the primary responsibility of uh, delivering a child lies with the women. The third uh, no, a compensatory reaction could be that you do not involve in the first two type of reactions, but you resort to drug abuse for example, okay. or you start you know, abusing alcohol intake. So, you are just you know basically it is uh, no usage of an external chemical agent okay, that does not allow you to think of certain situations that you are experiencing in reality. So, basically you are trying to blur your clarity about the immediate problem that you are facing using one or the other chemicals. Okay. So, whether it could be alcohol uh, intake or it could be drug abuse. All these three sets of behavior. Okay, have social and acceptance okay, that you should not do uh, these things. No? Legally you can be challenged in, in many forms okay. and psychologically we say that these are all compensatory reactions. You are trying to compensate for a great loss that you a great vacuum that you experience in your life. Now this set of compensatory reactions and the defense mechanisms they were the set of reactions that were in the gray zone. Now, we come to the other extreme end of it, where you have behavior uh, which would be uh, know revisited, re looked at uh, in the psychological clinics. Here we come across the behavior which are socially and personally handicapping, means it does not uh, allow you to socially perform what you should have actually performed or psychologically. Okay, it does not allow you the possibility of the growth that you are otherwise entitled to, you are capable of. Okay. So, somewhere your uh, know these sets of behavior uh, makes you handicapped in terms of your social and personal uh, indulgence and uh, achievement. Simultaneously, you could uh, also develop some psychosomatic problems. Psychosomatic problems are basically those set of problems, where the origin of the problem lies in your psyche okay. and the symptom is reflected physically. Uh, let me take one small example. No? Uh, situation when you become tense, situation when you have certain degree of anxiety and that makes you do something which actually is not needed, but you feel it has to be done. For example, uh, I ask you that fine, I have uh, put down uh, three different uh, symptoms here, 
can you tell me another symptom? And you say, sir, me, me? And I say, yes, you? And you say, <coughs> there was no choking in your throat, okay. but you experience certain degree of performance anxiety. It now you have to leave your seat, everybody will turn and look at you, means you are under scrutiny for this smaller frame of time. There is certain degree of performance anxiety that I have to perform, so that I meet the minimum expectation level of my fellow classmates here. They would say, ah, good English, good answer, okay, look wise good. So, overall you want your judgment to be at the higher end or within the acceptable limit. Okay. Uh, this perception you know, starts uh, you know, invoking this performance anxiety in you and that performance anxiety in turn makes you clear your throat multiple times. Okay. So, uh, psychosomatic uh, you know, reactions are like that, where the origin lies in your psyche, the manifestation is at the bodily level. Okay. Uh, we would not go into the details of it, uh, even when in the last unit when we come to uh, psychological disorders, but it, these are interesting set of uh, uh, you know, reactions and if you want to read about it, uh, you can certainly read uh, in any book of clinical psychology or psychopathology, you will find details about it. Uh, very few hospitals in India had psychosomatic clinics nowadays, okay, where the doctors from the medicine and other departments will suggest you to visit the psychosomatic clinic. Okay. And uh, it is these psychosomatic clinics which uh, makes you realize that uh, fine, the origin of your problem lies in your psyche and hence it needs to be addressed differently you should not be completely dependent on medication. Okay. The possible reactions here they could be that you develop functional amenorrhea. Okay. Now, this is basically a sim, a, an indicator of the fact that you have conceived. So, you just display this symptom and display of the symptom somewhere makes you very happy inside. Why? Because you know that uh, this is you know, one of the indicators of conception and I have developed it. So, it is fulfilling for you within. Two, you develop another symptom, no? what is called morning sickness. Okay. Again, this is reported by women uh, who have, who are bearing ch uh, child. Okay. The very fact that you are aware of this symptom, you try to you know experience it within and that makes you inwardly very happy that I also you know, am carrying a baby. The third case of uh, pseudo pregnancy, where you actually do not bear a child, okay, but then you have all types of abdominal uh, no growth, which is an, again a very strong indicator of uh, pregnancy. Okay. And usually you will find that the first two symptoms are still of uh, no little, uh, uh, what you call not as grave as what you usually see in pseudo pregnancy. The interesting clinical case is very few, very few, but the interesting clinical case, uh, one case that I know of pseudo pregnancy was where this woman uh, would sleep and once she is uh, no, asleep, the abdomen will reach its normal range. So, you have the flat normal uh, no, type of uh, abdomen and the moment she wakes up, okay, suddenly this abdomen will have a great uh, no, bulging. Now, the suddenly you know this bulging of the stomach with the moment she regains her consciousness you know, after she leaves her bed, she finds herself the way she was when before she was uh, you know, uh, coming to the bed. Okay. So, that is the extreme variation in terms of the physical response of the individual. Okay. Uh, now, these set of uh, responses okay, needs to be examined. Uh, legally, there is uh, no harm, you know, because there is a particular situation in your life that you are experiencing and therefore, uh, legally you will not be scrutinized if you uh, develop uh, any of these problems. But then, <coughs> socially uh, you know, people might uh, you know, rethink about attending you, okay. they might be concerned psychologically also this de uh, requires great degree of attention to the 
client concern ok, because uh, you are showing certain degree of psychosomatic problems or you develop certain type of neurotic problems. And then we come to the last set of uh, possible reactions and these uh, no reactions are much more acute in nature and therefore, they are uh, classified as psychotic reactions. These psychotic reactions could be delusions ok. Uh, in psychology we talk about uh, know three forms of such reactions. Uh, let me know again draw the range. All of you can see me right now ok. I am available in your physical environment ok and uh, you look at me and you are able to see me. The very fact that you are able to identify a human being standing in front of you talking to you something ok. Uh, is uh, no dependent on some type of a uh, elect, uh, electrochemical mechanism no the whole process of uh, no light coming to me falling on me going back hitting your retina impulses going to brain if you interpret it that way. But then finally, once you have sensed the presence of a human being you provide a meaning to what you have sensed ok. Now, if you consider that oh this is my instructor of PSY451 ok, you have successfully identified what you have sensed, you have provided a appropriate meaning to what you have sensed, this is what we call as perception in psychology ok. Now, if you are able to successfully provide meaning to what you have sensed, this is perception, but you might commit errors, three types of errors you can think of you say um, I have seen this person, but I do not know could be BSB um, maybe civil somewhere somewhere I have seen him ok. The moment you misclassify me in one or the other category ok uh, or uh, say the popular examples of uh, having uh, sh seen the shadow of a, a rope and then feeling as if this was a snake these are the popular examples of illusion, where you fail to provide appropriate meaning to what you have sensed, these are illusions ok. Perception illusions are perfectly ok, delusions and hallucinations are two things that we need to give more attention to with respect to the type of course that we are uh, deliberating on. There could be three types of delusions, one delusion of persecution, delusion of grandiose and delusion of reference ok. Say uh, one of you whisper into the ears of the person sitting next to you and I look at it and I say what they must be talking about, definitely he is talking about me ok. I am not an object of your interest, you are talking something else. But whenever I see any two person uh, talking, I think they must be talking about me. This is the delusion of reference that the activities in my uh, surrounding ok takes place with reference to me, which is not true. This is delusion of reference, delusion of grandiose. Uh, you know, uh, there is uh, there has been many many instructors in the world, but nobody as great as me. And you think that oh, um, uh, there have been students coming to your class, but there was no student like me. I can understand before the slide transaction takes place. So, disproportionately you know that uh, degree of greatness that you attribute to yourself that is the delusion of grandiose. And the third is delusion of persecution. I think uh, that person at the back has covered his head looking at me must be planning to kill me. This is a delusion of persecution. So, all three delusions you know uh, makes you uh, pay a heavy price, because it does not allow you to adjust well in your society ok. And then comes the third set illusion delusion we have discussed, then comes the third set and that is hallucination ok. 
you can see me in my absence also. Okay. So, when I ask you that do you see the instructor there and say yes very much. So, visual presence of uh, the stimulus, uh, visual presence of something or auditory presence of a signal in the absence of the actual signal is hallucination. Okay. So, you see you claim to see things that others cannot, you claim to hear things that others cannot that is uh, no, verbal or auditory hallucination. We are talking about delusion here. So, delusion of persecution concerning seductive behavior of men. So, somebody is trying to persecute you. Delusion of being uh, drugged and or uh, raped or having that intense belief in you, you think that why am I not able to conceive, why am I not delivering babies like all other women around me. Lord Krishna wants to take rebirth, he is searching for a suitable uh, mother and I, I am going to be a that baby. Okay. So, that type of uh, no belief <coughs> you are in crossed way or you have delusions of motherhood. Okay. All these things are on the complete aberrated end of the reaction, uh, the, uh, no, reaction continuum that we plotted in the beginning and these are classified as psychotic patterns. Now, neurotic and psychotic patterns both these set requires the attention of clinicians. Uh, the in the from the legal framework uh, you you should be certainly given proper attention by the state missionaries uh, society uh, should certainly pay attention to you society will be concerned even if you uh, show neurotic or psychosomatic or psychotic reaction in this type of a situation and clinically you deserve special attention because you have been showing neurotic psychosomatic or psychotic set of reactions okay so what we did here was that we took one situation and we tried to stretch it to the maximum possible extent. Okay. Uh, this was all about the possible range of uh, human reactions okay, and how our adjustment is put at stake. Uh, when we meet next, we would be taking up another module.